The other application for the virtual GPU is, of course, gaming. Almost every single technology that we create seems to have, at some level, an influence on video gaming. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be amazing if it's possible for us now to stream and to serve video games, incredible video games, from the cloud? Instead of the application that you saw Grady do earlier, Nuke and uh, Maya, wouldn't that be fantastic if those applications were, in fact, video games? It would be possible for us to literally host the video games in a server in the cloud and stream that video game instantaneously to any device anywhere. Now, the benefit of putting the video games in the, cl in the cloud is can't possibly be overstated, just as other mediums. When it becomes more convenient, that particular medium becomes much more accessed. This is an illustration using video. There's about, 20, about $50 billion worth of global revenues around DVD sales and Blu-ray sales. However, those same movies streamed from cable represents a substantially larger market. And the reason for that is because it's just more convenient. Convenience is one of the best ways to grow a market. We hope that the work that we're doing here with cloud gaming could do the same. Today, we're announcing a brand new technology. This is a technology based on the Kepler virtual GPU, based on the Kepler cloud GPU. We call it GeForce Grid. Our vision, and it will take some time for this vision to come true, our vision is that one of these days, one of these days, any device, any device would be a device that hosts, any device that hosts and streams a fantastic video game. That this video game experience would no longer reside in just the devices within the room, but it would fall away and effectively become a supercomputer in the cloud. GeForce Grid, utilizing the technologies that I've, I've shown you so far, but in a video game environment. Now, of course, all of this sounds fantastic, and it sounds like a dream come true if it happened. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be terrific if cars could fly? The problem that we had to solve, the problem that we have to solve is that in the final analysis, that server is not here. It is somewhere out in the cloud. It is oftentimes miles and miles and miles away, and there is this small matter of speed of light. Now, here's the problem. <clears throat> Gamers call it game input lag. It's measured in milliseconds. This is what a game console looks like. And now I've put it in the context with a few things you might recognize. A pro athlete has a response time, reaction time of about 50 milliseconds. A major league baseball, when thrown, takes about 400 milliseconds to cross the plate. An average human's response time is about 200 milliseconds. A video game, from the point that you touch the buttons, press the button, to the moment that the scene changes, that the computer graphics responds, is about 160 milliseconds. That 160 milliseconds, some of it is within the game console, some of it is within the television. The problem is, if we were to put that game console in the cloud, if we were to put that game console in the cloud, we would have to take that frame, encode it, stream it as video, have it travel over the internet, eventually show up over our Wi-Fi into our decoder, whether it's a set-top box or some kind, of, some kind of a local decoder, and put up back up on the screen. By that time frame, the lag is so long, you just simply don't feel like that game is interactive anymore. You could almost see the punch coming. And so that's the problem we have to solve. With the GeForce Grid, with the GeForce Grid, the virtualized GPU technology, the ultra-low latency remote display technology, and all of the work that we've done in system software, we've been able to reduce the input lag down to essentially the same level as that of a game console. To help me illustrate that, I'd like to welcome you, I'd like to welcome a veteran of the computer graphics and the veteran of the computer gaming industry. This gentleman has been working on computer games since he was 15 years old. He's a lot older than 15 now. He was able to drive here by himself. 
since he was 15 years old. He started a company called Shiny Entertainment after making many, many games. He's worked on some 100, 100 games and 29 game consoles. Very few developers in the history has ever worked on 29 different game platforms. Started a company called Shiny Entertainment. You guys might have seen his video game. It's a really cool game. The, the idea is fantastic. He starts his company called Shiny Entertainment. He says to himself, self, wouldn't it be great if there was a little worm? And this worm would become a soldier. It would find some suit and it would go into battle, okay? Earthworm Jim ends up selling millions and millions and millions of titles. Uh, Atari buys Shiny Entertainment. He became the president of Atari. At some point, he had a big reveal. And so with that, why don't you welcome Dave Perry, the CEO and co-founder of Gaikai. <laughs> hey, buddy, hey. how's it going? Very good, how are Great you? Great to see you. Thank so, you for inviting us. So what was, the, what was the moment? Tell us about that moment. You're, you're sitting here writing video games. You, got, you worked on 29 game consoles. You worked on some really goofy ones like the... Yeah. Uh, I won't say it. Or some, really cool, <laughs> some really cool ones. And, and the, the really best ones, of course, you worked on GeForce as well. But, but <laughs> tell me about what was that moment in 2008, 2009 that caused you to start Gaikai? I think what happened is we were getting really jealous of the movie industry and the music industry because they're just everywhere. And, you know, you bring out your big blockbuster movie, every set-top box is compatible, every tablet, every device that's out there is, is supporting getting their um, sort of their entertainment to the mass market. And the game industry just doesn't have that. We have consoles, which is great, but, um, but you know, we're responsible as an industry. Uh, Call of Duty was the biggest entertainment launch in history. And to have something that big. I mean, you guys heard the biggest entertainment launch in history, including movies and videos. Yeah, the biggest name one. It, was, everything. It was 400 million Broadway dollars. Broadway shows, in, everything. In 24 hours. And that was done without the support of all the people who distribute entertainment. And so the question is, is if we could, if we could sort of make this crazy idea work, could we get games, mm -hmm. the best games that the game industry can really make in front of that you know, massive audience? You guys, you guys, all the game developers would create a great game, and yeah. that in itself is really hard to do. It's really hard. Right? To, great, to build a great game that people love to play, that's beautiful, that technologically is engaging. And, and, and like now, after that, you've got to port it from platform to platform to platform, and the porting process is not, is not easy. I mean, they're different computers. Yeah, can you imagine right. making a movie and it only working on one specific brand of television or something like that? It would be, that's right. it would be a crazy idea, and yet that's something we put up with. Mm -hmm. it, it's funny because for a moment they had that big fight over Blu-ray versus HD DVD. And that was like only two that, formats. That was big like deal. crazy, right. uh, but we deal with yeah, that 29 every day. formats. Yeah. yeah. And so, so, uh, so what were the obstacles that, that you had to overcome to realize this vision? You got this, wow, wouldn't it be great? Yeah. You had the wouldn't it be great moment. Yeah. of getting this game out and, and just well, we assumed, work on any device. We assumed there would be lots of help out there. So we kind of, I started calling all the tier one network providers going, so you know, what can you do to help? And they, they hadn't really studied the latency around their data centers, for example. And um, we also had to solve uh, video compression problems. And so there was no really clear winner. We had to then try every compression algorithm. We tried switching compression algorithms on the fly. But the, the net result was, I think probably the hardest part at that time was how are we really going to solve this data center issue once and for all? Because there was, we went to Akamai and we went to Amazon and we went to everybody going, can you please help us? But for this, the responsiveness that we need, we have to get those servers so close. So the data center that we have in Sunnyville is five milliseconds from here. Mm -hmm. That's good enough. Now yeah. we're happy. Five milliseconds five is milliseconds. awesome. And so how do we give that experience to everyone in the world? And mm -hmm. so that's what we've been doing is we've been setting up data centers all over the world. We're now serving 88 countries that's um, at, at you know, incredibly low latency. And, and so as we add more and more data centers, you'll, you'll see the spreading and the, 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 sort of the quality of the experience will just keep increasing. We've been working together now for several years. Yeah. And our goal is to create a data center with GeForce Grid that makes it possible to deliver a very, very, very low latency experience, but also to provide 
the data center to scale out because we hope to have a whole lot of users. Exactly. Right? We hope yeah. to have users on mobile devices, on iPads and iPhones, on TVs, on PCs, on Macs. It doesn't really matter what these devices are, right? And cable set-top boxes, whatever they happen to be. And we were, so we're hoping for a lot of customers. And if that's the case, we need these data centers to be able to scale out and provide the service in a cost-effective way. Right? High performance and cost effectively. Yeah, I was. I have to say, just on the record, when we first met and discussed this this idea, um, at the time, the, the concept of, of doing this was was kind of a lot of people were on record saying this is impossible, it's crazy. That's and right. I remember you saying to me at the time, whatever is good for the gamers is good for Nvidia, and and so we're going to get behind this mm -hmm. and support it. And your team has been incredible, and the amount of energy and passion they've put into this mm -hmm. has been incredible. And so we've made advances that that people just didn't assume would have been possible because they didn't assume that NVIDIA would get behind this um, as strongly as they have. Well, let's show people so, yeah, what we, we did. Show. We